Hi guys, welcome to the Laray Studios. This is another episode of Android Programming. We'll be creating an employee directory application using Content Provider and SQLite database. I'll be revisiting the CRUD implementation, which stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete, with full implementation this time. The user will have the ability to create a new employee and uh, also read all employees created into a list view. And uh, you can also update a particular employee details, uh, whereby you, a long click on the list item takes you to the editor to edit uh, the details of the selected employee. You can also delete a particular employee or delete all employees from the SQLite database. This particular directory application is going to be offline and uh, in subsequent uh, lessons on this uh, application, we're going to be adding picture and search functionality of the list item. Join me guys. Let's create a wonderful employee directory application. If you are new to SQLite database, content provider, you can still catch up with us in this application because we're going to be starting from scratch. And this is going to serve as our starter code, uh, whereby we have lead to implementation while we'll be brushing it through on the major aspect of the code. In the build gradle, we included some dependencies. Firstly, the support design, 26.0.0 depends on the SDK you're using or you're building on. Uh, the review layout, which we'll be using on the uh, floating action button to actually uh, usher us to the editor activity. We use the Jake Walton, the button knife library. We also use the bundler and uh, the constraint layout which was uh, included from build. That's fine. So this is the uh, build gradle. We'll be looking at the rest while we have the layout of this application. We have the activity employee, which serves as the launcher layout. A quick rundown on how this layout is. It's a relative layout uh, as the parent tag. You can see the preview. Let me increase this so it could be more visible. What about we have a list view with an ID called list and inside this list view we have some empty view for the list uh, which is wrapped around a relative layout and we have the image view. Uh, this will actually show at first if uh, there are no content on the list item. So I have, it's called the rest studios as the drawable. And we have the text view uh, telling us that this is a little bit empty. We should add some details to our employee database. That calls the text view. And we have our floating action button, uh, which actually ushers us to the editor activity. We have the list item, which has as the item of each row in the list view. In the list item, we're going to have the first name, uh, the last name side by side, you know, all in text view, and the title, probably the title of the employee. Maybe the title is an accountant. So that's those are the three uh, text view we'll be using. The first name, last name, and the title of the employee, which will actually sit on the list view. So that's the list item. We have the menu where we have for the um, overflow menu, we have the ability to delete all employees. That's the item we'll need here. If you notice, we have it over there. And for the editor, at the editor page, which is the editor activity, that's, this gives uh, the ability to edit a particular employee details. 
we have the save and the delete uh, functionality so the save actually comes with a check mark from the drawable IC done you can see that's been uh, alighted and the delete comes with the text we'll look at our values well we have our strings we've had all strings uh, details right there in the string XML this is a very good practice any string details lock them down to the strings XML so that this will actually help you in translation probably I want to translate this to French or I want to translate this to Latin it could be very easy I will only translate the strings XML and everything will still be intact so these are uh, houses all strings XML will be using we'll be calling them in the course of the application we have the styles uh, what about we have the app theme you know the dark action bar the theme of the editor the style for the category in the editor uh, we also call this circular review theme uh, the style for an edit text and so on so we actually add that right there in the styles XML. Let's get to look at the Java classes. For us to accomplish the employee directory application, we'll need an SQLite database. And for us to do that, we actually created a package called data. Inside this package, we have two classes, the employee contract and the employee DB helper, which actually extends the open helper. We'll get to look at those two details. Uh, they're very important. This is the building, the starting point for any uh, database related application. In our employee contract, we save here. So we'll we actually have a constructor, an empty constructor called employee contract. And the content authority of this uh, provider, which will be using the content provider, we actually have a content authority. And most, most, uh, most times the content authority is always the package name, come the example direct employee directory you use your package name to declare your content authority uh, we have the base content uri what about we use the content authority to create the base of all uris which apps we use to contact the content provider we're going to talk about the content provider in the next part uh, what about we call on the uri the uri pass the content colon two slashes concatenate with the content authority that forms the base content URI we also have the path to the tables which will be used in the content provider and uh, we have a static final class that's an inner class that defines the constant values uh, this implements the base columns and uh, this is where we actually so we have the inner class that defines the constant value of the employees database table each entry in the table represents a single employee this implements the base columns and uh, we have the content URI to access the employee data in the provider uh, this is the content URI what about we appended the path of the base content URI and the path of the employees these two together we appended it to form the content URI what we will all be using that in the content provider the MIME type of the content URI for a list of employees we have uh, the MIME type for list of employees and for single employee we'll be talking of the bunch of employees and one employee about we have the content list type which are calls the content resolver with the cursor the directory base type uh, we are trying to form that we 
concatenate that with a slash with the content authority with another slash with the path to the employees the same thing goes for the single employee content URI this time we we'll use the cursor the item base type no and we have the content authority and the path employees we have the name of the database which is called employees declared as a final status string all in the employee contract and we assign a unique ID number for the employee only used in the database table called the base column underscore ID now we set the name of the employee How about we set the columns that were used the first name the last name, title, department, city, phone number, and email. Those are the details of a particular employee. We also set the gender of the employee. Definitely, an employee can be male or female, or we decide to assign an unknown to that as well, which we give an integer value of 1, 2, and 0. And we have a method called is valid gender. This returns whether or not the given gender is unknown, male, or female. So that returns true. And if not, it returns false. That ends the contract, uh, which we've de declared once and we'll be using in the course of this tutorial. Let's get to look at the DB helper. The database helper for employees app manages the database creation and version management. The employee DB helper extends the SQLite open helper. And we have the tag which will help us to log some uh, details to our console for debug purpose. The name of the database file, we gave it employees DB. The database version. If you change the, deba the database schema, you must increment the database version. We gave it one, and we construct a new instance, which is a constructor called employee DB helper. What about we passing the database name and the version? We are going to create a table inside our database which will be run in the onCreate method that takes up a parameter called db from the SQLite database. We create a string that contains the SQL statement to create the employees table. What about we have SQL create employees table and we issue out the command or the statement in SQL. Create table with the table name and the columns involved. The first is the ID, which is an integer, and it's a primary key, which is auto-incremented. That uh, we don't need to input or to give values to that particular column. It will be incrementing in any addition. We have the column first name, which is a text, not null. The same thing goes for the last name. The title, department, city, phone, email. The employee gender is an integer data type, also not null. We execute the SQL query to create the employees table. And we also have the on upgrade. Since the database is still at version 1, so there's nothing to do here. We have it set up. With this structure, you have your database up and running and for us to trigger this implementation we created an employee activity which is the launcher activity because the db is being created in the background it's not actually interacting directly with the ui it's until you start calling data from the db before you get that showed in the ui in the employee activity uh, we have the list of employees that were entered and stored in the app, which will be actually displayed from here. This extends app compact activity and 
we instantiate, we call the employee DB helper, not instantiated yet. In our onCreate, we set the content view to the activity employee, which is from the layout XML. We set up our floating action button to open the employee editor uh, using button knife to bind up our uh, data. So we don't, uh, we call the find view by ID in uh, uh, lesser using the uh, button knife. I have a video for button knife. If you are new to button knife, you can make lay on to that. What about we find the view by ID? which is FAB, that's the ID given to the floating action button. We set an onclick listener to this. And onclick, we're still going to do some stuff here in subsequent uh, tutorials. We instantiated the employee DB helper with a new employee DB helper. This triggers the DB helper. So once this is being called, the database will be created and the columns will also be created to the tables. We have the onCreate options menu because we're going to be handling some overflow menu. What about we inflate the menu catalog, which we have right there in the menu folder. And on option items selected, when the user clicked on the menu option in the Arbor overflow menu, uh, this is going to respond to a click. Either delete all entries. That's what we have there. We'll be extending more on this in the course of this uh, playlist because we are actually going to achieve a lot from this application. Join me in the second part of this tutorial but before I go I would like to show you the Android device monitor for you to be sure that you actually created the DB and the tables were created successfully. So you need to find the package. Actually run this on an emulator. You can also do this via emulator, which is an example, Delaray employee directory. We have the databases. What about we have the employees DB? Can you find that? So that's that guarantees that we have an employee DB sitting right inside our emulator. So it's been created successfully. We can visualize this from the DB browser, which I have running on my machine. You can do this in any form you feel like, where I can get to browse data. And you can you find the columns created correctly. This is the essence of checking this out. This makes us guarantee that we've executed these four stacks. Join me in the second part. What about we'll be talking about content provider? We'll be adding more functionality to our employee directory application. I'll be uploading the source code to my GitHub. Start from there, and I'll be creating branches in the course this bumper package application. Thank you guys. Catch me up in the second part of this.